afternoon. My name is Kevin DeBarn. And I just wanted a few minutes of your attention. I know that uh, this is the month of uh, June, and it's uh, Father's Month. I think last month was Mother's Month, but this month is uh, Father's Month, right? We celebrate it, Father's Day. So, happy Father's Day to all your fathers who are out there, would-be fathers and fathers that have been fathers for the last 20, 30, 40 years, and you fathers, you know? You are blessed because God has given you a manifestation of your seed. May God continue to bless and increase your family. And for those, and for those of you who are new mothers, likewise, Happy Mother's Day, Happy Father's Day. I want to begin with a word of prayer. Father, I just want to thank you for this beautiful, sunshiny day in the month of June. I want to thank you for Pioneer Square and all the activities that's been going on here during the course of the month. Pray, Lord, that as we continue to go through the summer, you will continue to bless all of the activities that that are going to continue to take place from week to week, weekend to weekend, as uh, the church comes out and the community comes out and, and gives us festivals and uh, concerts and all sorts of good things. May you bless this message and uh, those who are here to hear it. In Jesus' name, amen. At the beginning of the month, probably the first weekend or the second weekend, I preached over there a message for fathers about Father's Day. And I think what I was trying to do was to sort of like take the focus, take the glory from our earthly fathers and putting it on our heavenly fathers. To take away the glory from our earthly fathers and to put it on our heavenly fathers. And I think what I said was that we, we worship, actually, we spend 300, we spend one day out of 365 days during the course of the year to honor our earthly fathers. But then what do we do with the 364 days that remain? Why don't we take the 364 days that remain and honor and glorify our heavenly fathers? Our earthly father provides for us home. Our earthly father provides for us home, shelter, clothing, a place to eat, food to eat, and all sorts of things. But our heavenly father provides for us life and breath and everything that we need. And so our heavenly father deserves much more of our honor than that of our earthly father. So if we spend one day out of the year to honor our earthly father, we should spend 364 days honoring our heavenly father because of all the good that he bestows upon us, the children that he blesses with, the food, the good weather, and all of these other things, good health, wealth, jobs, home, prosperity, all of these things should bring us to our knees and to ask God for forgiveness for sins that we have committed. But I want to bring you another angle to Father's Day or this time of year and why we should honor our Heavenly Father. Remember the parable in the New Testament of the unrighteous servant who owed his master money. But after being forgiven the debt, he threw his own slave in prison for not reimbursing him of money that he owed. Let me backtrack for a little bit. There was a rich man, a rich man whom I owed money to. I owed him $1,000. The rich man pardoned me for the $1,000 that I owed him. 
I, on the other hand, walked away happy because I was forgiven. Yet, when I found a fellow friend of mine who I loaned a hundred dollars to, I would not forgive that friend, and I took him, and I called the authorities to take him to jail. So the authorities came and hauled him away. Actually, yeah, hauled him away. When the rich man found out what I did, he was so upset that he took me and put me in jail. Because the kindness that he showed to me, I did not show to my friend. So the master took the slave and placed him in prison for how he mistreated his slave, says the gospel. And this came from the word of Christ. We all have a certificate of debt that we owe to God. What is the certificate of debt that God has against us? What is the certificate of debt that God has against you and that God has against me? If the rich man is God and we are the people who owe him for our lives and for our children and for our riches and our beautiful city, if we owe God that much and he has a certificate of debt saying that we are guilty of sin. Hi. Hi. You have a strong faith in God? Yes, I do. Can I please step in? Can I finish? Yeah. Okay. Let me finish. I just wanted to tell you that I have a strong faith. Let me finish. And then I'll talk to you. Just sit right here. Just sit right here. How long are you going to take? Uh, five minutes. Just, just, just sit right there. Don't move. Uh, so, here it is, God has a certificate of debt against us. And that certificate of debt is saying that you, Kevin Tukloron, are guilty of sin. You, whoever you are, are guilty of sin. And therefore, you need to pay up for that debt of sin that is against you. You need to pay up. It's sort of like going to the courthouse and the judge says, you're guilty. Officers, take this man and put him in prison until he pays his debt to society. Whether it be credit card debt, whether it be house debt, whether it be debt because you're not taking care of your children, whatever the debt is, the court system says you didn't pay, therefore you go to jail. God comes along and says we have sin. We are guilty of sin, and because of the sin that we've committed, and because of the sin nature that we have, and because of the sin that we are known to commit, we are guilty, and therefore we owe him. Angels, take this man and cast him into the outer darkness. What is the certificate of debt that God has against us? I want to read your passage of scripture. Psalm. 14 says this. Psalm 14 says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have committed abominable deeds. There is no one who does good. The Lord has looked down from heaven upon the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. They have all turned aside. Together, they have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. That's the Old Testament. When you go into the New Testament and you read Romans chapter 1, bear with me. The Bible says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Because that which is known about God is evident to them. Because God made it evident to them. It's evident within them, for God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, 
His invisible attributes. His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made. Therefore, they are without excuse. For even though they knew God, they did not honor Him as God. Or give thanks. But they became futile in their speculation, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, exchanging the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man, and of birds, and four footed animals, and crawling creatures. Therefore, God gave them over. God gave them over in the lust of their hearts to impurity, so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshipped, and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions. For their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural, and in the same way also the men abandoned the natural function of the woman and burned in their desire toward one another. Men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a great, the great mind to do those things which are not proper, being filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice, they are gossip, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful, and although they know the ordinances of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death, they not only do the same, but also give hearty approval to those who practice death. That, my friend, is the certificate of death against us. When you go to Colossians 2, the Apostle Paul sums it up by saying the following words. He says to the church of Colossae, having canceled out the certificate of death, consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. The question is, what is the certificate of death that God has against us? Psalms 114 says, Psalms 14 verses 1 to 3 says, the fool has said in his heart there is no God. Romans 1 says, Verses 18 through 32, we are guilty of not allow, acknowledging him as God. Therefore, he gives us over to the degrading passions of our hearts and of our minds. Because we refuse to bow the knee to the Creator. Because we refuse to acknowledge that there's a God behind creation. Because we refuse to accept Jesus as Lord. He turns us over to a life of sin. And therefore, he has written it down, and he says, This is the certificate of death I have against you, human beings, who are created in my image, according to Genesis 1.26. How can we pay back this debt? 